Right now I'm reading two different books, but not about architecture, about business developing, marketing, storytelling. There is a lot of things that we need to learn as well, mm -hmm. not only architecture. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I am your host, Ryan Willard, and today I had the superb pleasure of speaking with Veneta Vladimirova. So this was great because I was recently in Paris and I got the opportunity to actually visit Veneta in her offices in the beautiful uh, arrondissement. I think it was the 8th that we were in. And Veneta really is quite brilliant. A little bit about her backstory. Originally, she's from Bulgaria, and she arrived in France at the age of 19 as an au pair to learn French. Instantly, and I can totally understand where she's coming from here, she had an unconditional love for Paris and for France. Uh, and she was really kind of fell in love with the whole place, and it's, you know, she decided to stay there. Originally, she, was, she wanted to be a journalist. But her curiosity and ambition led her down a different path. And against all odds, two years later, she was accepted to study architecture in Paris. So architecture became her passion and provided her a means to open the doors of creativity. For Veneta, architecture represents the synthesis of all artistic professions, multidisciplinary approaches to guide forms and drawing from the sciences to inf influence design methods. And as an architect, she's constantly seeking innovation in every sense of the word. Her goal is to design and build while highlighting the quality, scalability and ingenuity of each project. She loves working on projects of all various scales across all types of programs. Her life journey has been about building from nothing and has turned her into a tenacious fighter who pursues what excites her. Love and conviction drive her to push her limits and achieve anything she sets her mind to. Now she proudly leads two architectural studios in France. Her ultimate ambition is to open up agencies in every major city in France and eventually expand internationally. Her vision extends beyond architecture alone. She aims to close the chain of production through collaborations with engineers, technical experts, and economic firms. So this was so fascinating. Veneta really is a superb entrepreneur and businesswoman. She understands at a very deep level her clients and what their problems are, what their pains are and how to serve them. She knows how to network. She knows how to market. She knows how to negotiate. And in this conversation, you'll hear her discussing some of the strategies that she's employed to win work, how her sheer confidence and ability to, to, you know, to talk and to influence people allowed them to win projects when they didn't always have the portfolio for it. Um, you know, this is an ob often an obstacle for many um, practices. But again, she's also learned how to structure her fees in an innovative way that actually reflects some of the financial cycles of their clients. She's been able to take more risk with the way that she wins work and the way that she structures her, fee her fees, uh, which has helped secure relationships with developers. And she's only been able to do that because she's been running her business very well from the outset. Um, we talk about how creative she's been in terms of her networking and building of relationships and how she has been at the center of creating thought leadership and communities and tribes within the property industry within a very competitive marketplace in Paris. And we talk about how her, her business has been streamlined and made incredibly efficient to ensure that they're able to deliver projects whilst maintaining a profit. So this is really, really fascinating. Again, a real privilege. I love it when I get to speak with um, entrepreneurial architects like this. So sit back and enjoy Benetta Vladimirova. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Vanetta, well, welcome to the Business of Architecture. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. So here we are in your studios, your beautiful studios in Paris. Thank you. And I've been a big fan of yours. Somebody introduced me to you um, via Instagram, one of my clients actually. And they said, hey, you need to check out this lady. She's literally 
she's like you but in France <laughs> and and I was really interested in the kind of content that you were making and you know the kind of advocacy that you were having around the business side of architecture and then on a little bit more um, inquiry discover that you've got your own business that you've been in Paris for quite a long period of time you're originally from Bulgaria Bulgaria originally yes. from Bulgaria so quite an interesting journey in your own career um, so perhaps what, why don't we start there what was it that brought you to to Paris oh it was uh, surprisingly I was supposed to be here for only six months and uh, I, I just had an opportunity to um, look after a kid for six months and learn French, mm -hmm. visit Paris. It was like a, just an adventure for like a, a, a bit of time. And here I am 14 years later, <laughs> almost 15. Amazing. Uh, yeah. And so you studied architecture in Paris yes. and pretty much straight out, out of university you yes. set up your own business. Yes, sure. So I started architecture here in Paris and I, do, I did all of my uh, courses at one time. I never stopped. I didn't take a break. And then seven years later, uh, we founded the company. And you registered in France? As uh, a, yes. As, as, as an architect? Yes, registered, yeah. So, so why did you not decide to go and work for anybody else? Did you have, did, was it that you had projects straight out of university yes. or, and what, or was that always the vision just to set up your it own It was company? kind of always the vision. I never saw myself as an employee mm -hmm. somewhere. And although it passed through my mind because it was like security, if you want to like have money directly and like have because in, in Paris uh, to have an apartment to to live well and everything is you need money you need a lot of money mm -hmm. and as a student uh, it was a really difficult time for that like a very small apartment uh, a lot of e economy on everything not going out a lot so uh, it was kind of you, you, you tell yourself maybe some security it's going to be fine for some period and then I will start the company or then I will do something but um, uh, be, between the everything and every thoughts I, I told myself why not start during uh, the year of school try to work something try to have some experience try to uh, have some client what is the client what is the project because school is one thing but really reality is something else mm. so uh, we and as I say uh, we is like uh, the other founder of the company so we were uh, school together mm -hmm. so we were doing all of our projects together and we uh, started to thinking about uh, making the company uh, building some business and working together so during school we were the same. We started uh, during school uh, looking for some small projects, design projects, not architectural ones because we couldn't, mm -hmm. but some designing some furniture, interior design, um, arranging spaces, uh, 3D, uh, everything that we could actually so that we can start from somewhere. Right, so you were, even whilst you were still studying, you were actually going off and finding clients yes. and doing little bits of, of work here and there. And this was your, so the, the co-founder of the, of the business, which is your husband, is yes. that correct? Yes, it's a family business now. Got it, yeah. got it. Amazing. So, so that has its own complications as well. Sure. Work, sure. Working with your husband. And, yeah. And <laughs> how, how do you manage to balance that? Do you know when to... Do you know when to turn off the business conversations or is, yeah. is work always being spoken about? I, I don't think there is a, a balance point anywhere. It's just uh, making the right decisions about the priorities at the moment. So sometimes it's like 100% work. Sometimes it's more personal mm -hmm. and family time. So you need to to feel when you, you have to be uh, where you are, and um, I think s 
somewhere the the way that we are a couple uh, makes us stronger in that decision so we do understand each other i think that being an architect being a, a founder of a company being a head of uh, some business it's very um, difficult to understand if you are with somebody who is he doesn't have the same life mm. so uh, it's kind of a positive thing i think yeah it's difficult so both under, at least you under, both understand the kind of yeah. commitment that it takes to, yeah. to run to run the business yeah sure so you were you were doing projects whilst you were still at university and then as soon as university finished then you kind of just went full-time into the business yeah and so i've never worked for anybody actually my last um uh, i was i was uh, supposed to do some uh, uh trainee uh, uh time for architects and my last one actually didn't went all the way through because uh, the the company um fell apart so it was very difficult <laughs> even this one it couldn't go through <laughs> So, so what kinds of clients did you have in the early days? So you were saying whilst you were at university, you were doing all sorts of design project, anything you could get your hands yeah. on. What was the shift? Well, it was uh, uh, for work. We, we did a lot of for, for anybody, like uh, a table or just a living room or um, some newborn uh, baby room or something. So it was, it was really small um, projects. Uh, most of the time we didn't even get paid. That's how we learned that we need to, to be more serious about it because <laughs> some people, when they have the job done, they just disappear. Right. Even if they, if they are very glad with what they get. So we learned some difficult um, um, times and we learned how to do it. Even now we are still, still learning. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So, but uh, we have only one uh, big professional client and in terms of money and time uh, he occupied like 80% of our uh, incomes mm-hmm. and time and that is what um, permitted us to 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 look forward and then tell each other okay now we can open the firm now we can register and we can continue and looking for more clients like this mm-hmm. so today i'm not really working with like uh, um, people uh, on their own for their apartments it's, it's like for the beginning it was okay but yeah. it, it's it's hard to it's very hard yeah. yeah yeah so so you had a you had one kind of commercial client who yeah. was a contractor yeah and then you were like actually this is a lot easier to get work from yeah. this same client as it is with with the lots of residential projects yeah. so what is what does your client spread look like today Today uh, we're working only with professionals, mm-hmm. like for residential building, um, a lot of business building. Now we are developing to do some uh, very different thing that we are used to in uh, um, industrial world and buildings. And it's it's like every time you start again mm-hmm. and from nothing. And architecture is so. Uh, different in it depends on what you're doing so now we are learning so much stuff and that's one of the greatest thing about the profession so only professional uh, commercial firms we are working with and I'm glad to know and and how did you start to find those sorts of clients oh, what, yeah. what was the kind of strategies that you deployed that was difficult actually when we opened the firm the same year I got pregnant also so we did everything at the same time <laughs> And I remember myself uh, working the last day before giving birth. I was still working wow. on, a permi- yes, on, a, on, a, on a project. And I, I, I didn't even notice that I was <laughs> going to... <laughs> I must go to the hospital. So... <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let me get the drawings out. <laughs> it, yeah, it's kind of funny. But now I am laughing. But at the time, I wasn't that <laughs> laughing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it took us a lot of time to discover what's the strategy to to skip what we don't want to mm-hmm. and how to get the orders that we would like to have, which is totally different from now as well. So everything changes 
throughout the years and experiences. And actually, um, at the time, like seven years ago, I didn't really realized what um, what was the strategy of the marketing how to build a, uh, like a, the strategy good is the strategy mm -hmm. how how to build a business that is working on and and growing and uh, developing it was kind of spontaneous really naive and um, probably some kind of lucky that we even got here today because even I don't know if it's friends or it's the the, the time uh, that we were to but it's nobody spoke to us that the business is business that it's uh, okay you're an architect but you also need to be a lot of other stuff if you want to work as an architect for you for your own uh, name mm -hmm. so we learned these things like uh, on the difficult way <laughs> when we tried and we failed and we tried and we failed and then uh, we saw that some things are working and other things are working even better and today we are doing better than before but we still are learning a lot of stuff about yeah. it so we um, we did a lot of um, like a poker face, we, we, we faked it until we made it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how actually we contact a lot of people that uh, were out of our range mm -hmm. uh, completely. Uh, we we, we did, had no experience in construction mm -hmm. at all because we didn't even uh, work for anybody else. So uh, we learned everything uh, on the way and we were bluffing a lot, like mm -hmm. saying, yes, of course I can do it. I, mm -hmm. I know how to do it, and mm -hmm. then we spend like hours and days and months studying how we can do it actually yeah. when we got the, the job. So, um, still kind of lucky, kind of naive, kind of foolish, but it mm -hmm. worked at the time. Um, and I'm glad today it's kind of the same thing actually, but more structured and. Uh, like well, that, strategies I, I, I think that's interesting. I mean, you know, so many, like whatever level you're at a business, there's always the next kind of yeah. sector or the new type of client and you know that you can do it. It's just the question of having yeah. the other person believe that you can, you can do it. Yeah. And also you've got to make sure that you get your fees right because the client is yeah, now sure. kind of, they don't realize, but they're paying you to learn on yeah. the project. So yeah. you've got to make sure that you know, that learning doesn't get in the way of, of anything. Yeah. What, what sorts of, did you have any kind of um, resistance from clients? How did you convince them to, if, yeah. they, if you didn't have a, because this is one thing that so many architects will say, they're like, oh, we haven't got experience in this. This client wants to see a portfolio of 16 yeah. different buildings. You know, it's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. But how, how did you, how did you? Yeah, what, difficult. Because what sorts of agreements did you come up with? Or Yeah, actually, uh, what was uh, as well difficult that I had only uh, 28 years old, 27. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're that young and you don't have the portfolio that's working, like it's impossible. We, we were aware that it's not going to happen for us if we don't make it happen. Yeah. So what we de did here in Paris, in France, you, you, you can work f with um, um, investors that are working on uh, residential buildings and um, they need a lot of um, um, studies before uh, buying the, the ground. And these studies are very hypothetical and not paid. Mm -hmm in general yeah so there is a lot of um, free work mm -hmm. out there <laughs> so we said ourselves we need to start like that being ready to do some free work and then uh, we'll see mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were prepared to work a lot and not get a lot of money and that's how we started. We proposed our services like analyzing and studying some sites so that we can see if uh, the investors could build the buildings that they wanted to mm -hmm. at the places that they wanted to. And some projects uh, were interested, so we decided to develop them as if they were real projects. So that's how we build our portfolio. 
Right. We were like, uh, I can say probably in the year we did like four, five, six thousands of different files, mm -hmm. different studies, and there was no one that ended happening. So we just uh, picked some and we worked on them as they were really real projects. We did some uh, 3D uh, views, uh, we did all of the plans, we've really developed and learned a lot about architecture doing this because as we were our own clients actually, mm -hmm. there were not not a demand, there was not a contract, and so we did every rule, every um, criticism came from us as mm -hmm. well. So um, it was very interesting, and that's how we started to build our portfolio. With like, right. so so actually, you were doing you were doing little bits of investigative work yeah. for real developer investors, yeah. and then there were projects that you were finding off your own initiative yeah and then doing the speculative design yeah. work were you taking any of these did any of these projects become like a like a deal for another investor or what, what um, kind of sites were you using no no because um we couldn't propose them to another one it's like confidential mm -hmm. so later we understood that uh, we actually could and just only if the first investor uh, gave us the agreement to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started as well. Um, finding some uh, work interesting for other investors that uh, because every investor is uh, looking for something different mm -hmm. and has a different budget. So we learn uh, a bit how to manage uh, some uh, sites and if it's not working for one it's probably working for another one so we did some work we we did a, like an example project and then we offered to another one so that's how we started to be interesting for investors mm -hmm. they said oh they're doing something different they propose us work yeah and that's how they said okay i like what you're doing so I will give you some more interesting sites that I know that they will probably be working. And that's how we started to be uh, uh, in a team with mm -hmm. the investors, not just in the small architects that ah. are working dirty stuff. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, so actually because you were being proactive, yeah. finding sites, showing them here's what's possible, yeah. they were like, like that. Yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting. That's how we started. That's how we made like a really um, strong bond with some investors. And uh, when the files and when the sites um, showed some good results, and then we started working mm -hmm. like, like this. But it was a long time. What, what kind of investors were you working with, and how did you find them in the first place? Uh, mostly on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. like we are doing some research, uh, we are uh, aiming uh, the, um, the regions that we would like to work on and then we introduce ourselves, we show what we have done because now we have real <laughs> portfolio with real uh, projects inside and um, that's how it's working but mostly I do a lot of events Mm -hmm. like several per week and my clients are there so they introduce me to their friends that are, have their own companies and that's how it's working mostly because the they um, they are confident that I will do the job so introducing me mm -hmm. it's uh, like I already won <laughs> a lot of things before yeah. uh, really uh, I had to introduce myself or had to show mostly most of the time now I did, don't even have to show my portfolio mm -hmm. so that's amazing yeah. now, the, the irony of it now you've now you've yeah. got the work you don't have to show it yeah. so what, well, what kind of events do you do you host them yourself or these are just these are just events that the clients putting on I am also hosting them some of them here uh, at the, um, at the agency at the firm I do like three four uh, big events per year mm -hmm. where I invite my clients also um, people that I um, like because of their passion in work, similar to ours, like in finance, like in um, 
consulting agencies. So that's how I connect people. I like that people connect each other and mm -hmm. offer them different kind of businesses. I think that's uh, uh, really um, positive for mm -hmm. them and for me as well. And uh, also uh, right now I'm starting a private club for uh, everybody that is interested in real estate, not mm -hmm. only architecture, but in general real estate. So we, it's starting in October and I think that's a, that's a good thing because people are going to meet each other and I particularly will choose only people that are passionate about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I love that I went when people love what they do it's different when you work with somebody like that and it's not only for working but just have a nice drink nice food talk to each other so that we are humans also mm -hmm. that's great not only uh, worry about oh, okay uh, when we are working what's the money what's the budget I think that's a bit overwhelming because otherwise it's old time yeah and it's too much stressful. Yeah, no, exactly. And the ability to, to build the relationship yes, and actually firstly, have, have yes. the other, build the trust, right? So this is really interesting. So you're actually hosting your own events. You're creating a kind of community, mm -hmm. if you like, of real estate yeah. um, professionals um, and investors. Are there, um, is there a sort of specific kind of person that you're looking for? Like say from the developer or the investor side, either in terms of sector, or do you have now like a specialist niche of yeah. person that you like to work with? Well, I prefer to, um, to accept the people that could make decisions mm -hmm. in the firm, that I are uh, most likely to be um, some active actors. Mm -hmm on the market of real estate and not only real estate because I have some poli uh, politic people in, in politic uh, in banks in um, um, acting it's it's very um, versatile open to everyone I really just prefer the human before his profession right. that's how I see it and the, the, the contact, the, the feeling when you just can share something mm -hmm. and just keep it also uh, quiet, not a space that everyone needs to be uh, show off and say, I have a firm like that, I have this money, I have this, I travel there, I can do that. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. it's not just about some nice time. Yeah, and so you're you're kind of filtering out the, the yeah. sorts of people that you want yeah. to be in the in the space yeah. with you. And do you find that you you meet most best like the best quality people mm. through others, or do you still actively go onto LinkedIn and? I still search. search new people because I believe in uh, new contacts and new. Uh, um, as I said, I, we're kind of uh, looking for new uh, spheres uh, of work, new uh, projects. So every time that we put that challenge to us, uh, say, OK, we want to, more, to make more projects like this or that commercial, industrial, um, sports uh, buildings, we are, I'm, I, I have to look for some new partners or investors so that I can meet them and uh, do all over everything proposed to work with them. And uh, every time for each um, sector, it's like you start all over again. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm... Yes, and you do. do. And do you still just remain as an architect or have you been involved in kind of being the developer yourself or, you, you know, getting involved in the sale or the profits from the sale of a property that you've worked on? It, that's, uh, that's the plan, actually. I think that being my own client, it's going to be my next level dream. Mm -hmm. And I would really love to invest myself and do uh, um, projects and see uh, every part of the project. As an architect, I believe that I, I, my next step is to, to build a team that uh, closes the circle of uh, conceiving and production and managing a project. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm I'm working on that. Actually, we are starting two more businesses related to that. One is only about uh, monitoring uh, construction sites, and the other one is uh, for the financial, economic, and estimation uh, on projects. Um, I need uh, to think about creating some engineer mm -hmm. uh, as well, uh, consultancy agency. But uh, throughout the time, I really want to build a team that is working together and responding on a demand, also uh, on a team with the client. I really believe that there is something to to, fi to figure out all together, mm -hmm. and the project is uh, much better when it's worked uh, as a team. Mm -hmm. Other Otherwise, like each um, consultant is working for her, himself. Yeah. And the best part of it is if I can be also my own client, mm -hmm. it's going to be perfect. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> But within so, the time. Very interesting. So, so you've actually started to develop a, a cost estimation team. Yes. As a kind of additional service and yes. you'll bring in quantity surveyors and whoever else yes. is involved in that. Um, and then another another team that was doing what did you say? I'm monitoring the, uh, monitoring the, the sites. The sites yes. Yeah, so the kind of actually who are in yeah. place and doing that, yes. and it's very very impressive, very very interesting um, um, business model. Um, in terms of becoming your own client, what kind of needs to happen to be able to do that? What are some of the challenges with positioning yourself to? you know, do yeah. what the developers are doing because I know so many architects want to go down this route and it's not... It's it, not easy. Yeah. Actually, by the law, I'm not allowed to to do that with my architectural firm, so I need to build another company mm -hmm. and I cannot be, um, like, I cannot have the majority of the parts on the other company. That's why also being a couple helps this mm -hmm. uh, strategy of the... Of business developing because here for this firm of architecture I'm the architect I'm the only architect that, mm -hmm. that's presenting the firm so that my um, my partner can do the investment part right so we really separated the the the, the rules like I'm the architect and he will be the investor Oh, perfect. Yes, perfect. but we will manage everything as we manage it together. So. Got it. So he'll, so he'll lead like the investment firm yes. itself, the development firm, and then we'll be almost employing the architecture firm exactly. to, do yes. this, to do the services exactly. and you keep it as a, a kind of thing like that. And yeah. then you get to enjoy the benefits yeah. of both. Of well, I will enjoy. participate on every firm, but I cannot be in the majority. Right. Because of the laws of architecture. Right, right. And do you ever, do you, when kind of moving into that kind of business structure, do you worry about then becoming a competitor to some of your other clients? Oh, I think there is a place for everyone, actually, as an architect and also um, between architects. I, I don't see myself as uh, the only architect that needs to do every project. Mm -hmm. I do believe that everyone has its own place and I will be not in uh, conflict with my clients because um, maybe we can also work together. Mm -hmm. I see it more as an opportunity to work with my clients mm -hmm. and invest together. It's a crisis time right now. This mm -hmm. year it's difficult. Last year was difficult, but there were uh, a lot of projects going on. This year for France, it's very, very difficult for new construction. Mm -hmm. So everybody is looking for a solution to, um, to continue uh, building and constructing new projects. That's why also some, sometimes I propose to, um, to be a part of the investment team mm -hmm as well as an architect to invest my work so there is no need to pay my my work before being sure that the project is going on so i take some responsibility some risk on my side but then i'm well paid if the project is working but everything that i invest as work i invest it as it was money right and then i just take the profits can you give an example of how you do some of that 
well it it should be done uh, legally so mm -hmm. i do employ some uh, lawyers and financial consultants i don't know everything about it even though if i study a lot but um, so uh, we are making a new company mm -hmm. and we associate the architecture firm to their firm mm -hmm. and then this new firm is investing and in the in the papers in the status you 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 put that you will um, participate with your work and you estimate the work at the value of the work, the value of the work. and so it was like it was money amazing it was really cool very very cool i mean this is something that i talk a lot about with with clients and with architects you know is you know if you start having your services and evaluation around your services you don't have to get paid money for it and yeah. you can you can package it up like what you're describing and actually have it as an investment into the end part of the yeah. project which will pay off you know, you know you'll get a lot more value from yeah. whether you just do it there's there's just risk involved exactly. and you've got to cash flow it exactly so how do you how do you balance those two how yeah. do you how do you mitigate your risk and how do you ensure that you've got the money coming in to be able to i need to do uh, different clients different projects and balance in between big ones and small ones because the small ones are like uh, working and developing um, quickly, more quickly. And then um, uh, the invoices are coming uh, more uh, frequently. Mm -hmm. So mixing between big and small projects, um, developing a lot of design projects as well for the interiors uh, because I don't need an authorizations and everything, so it's going really uh, quick. So that's how, and also I learned that if I want to develop like this, I cannot rely only on architecture to live my life as <laughs> I want to. Yeah. So that's why I'm looking for some extra work uh, and do different stuff, investing in another businesses, looking for my money elsewhere. Uh, than my film, my architectural film. I, I think I feel that the moment is to invest my time uh, developing it, but not to get the money out of it. Yes, got it. So it, it, and, and, and this is very interesting because in, you can start to see the, the architecture firm actually being a gateway yeah. to doing all of these other sorts exactly, of things. Exactly. And you've got these other kind of bolt-on businesses that can be developed. And then it positions yeah. you very nicely at the center of development projects and at the beginning your architectural services are a tool to actually invest with into other projects which can then generate um, cash at the at the outset yeah but this is not like so many architects don't have the what's the word I don't want to say the right word they don't have the guts to do it yeah it's like it it really you know there's a lot of there's a lot of risk involved a lot in, of risk yeah in, in doing it and it's kind of very scary um, yeah. How do you and your your husband kind of like balance, well, balance it out? It's, and, yeah, it's been and, years that we live that way. Even starting this business was mm -hmm. a lot of risk. Uh, having one baby at the beginning of the business was a lot of risk. Having a second one just later on. So it's all of the time it's risky, but it gives you so much freedom as well mm. and so much gratitude and you can just uh, um, discover so much so architecture is not just um, it is it is a gate but it's also learning us how to discover things how to be curious how to how to manage to do stuff so actually right now I'm I'm reading two different books books but not about architecture about business developing marketing storytelling there is a lot of things that we need to learn uh, as well mm -hmm. not only architecture so our time is like uh, a whole time i think there is a lot of um things that i had to give up on mm -hmm. to to be able to develop this mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of personal time that i need to skip for yeah. now but it is the moment. 
maybe mm-hmm. in one year, ten years, in fifteen years, it's going to be diff- different. Yeah. From now. You, you mentioned that France has gone through a lot of uh, challenges this year yeah. in construction, and we've been seeing this in in North America as well. The UK yeah. has had its own sort of um, different challenges. What what have been the sort of specific things that have been difficult in France? Well, uh, first of all, the prices. That's why we um, um, started this new business about uh, uh, financial uh, estimating of, of the construction process because um, all of the prices went up. And here the process of construction is really long mm-hmm. because the, to have um, a permission from the state to build, it could take up to one year sometimes more. Mm-hmm. So from the moment that you start the, the project and you estimated your budget till the time that you start building, uh, it, it could have been plus 50% for the prices. So the project, you can not longer do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's simple wow. as that. So um, that's really, really uh, uh, big difficult, I think. One of the big problems here for construction. Uh, so um, even now, like the past uh, two years, being with the prices being so uh, up and down and uh, very uh, not secure, this um, this made a lot of projects go down and never uh, be finished. That's why a lot of architects has a problem with uh, with with the firms and all of the consult- consulting uh, firms are in, in difficult times. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was one of the reasons, and also we had some elections. We here in France we don't need a lot of things to happen to just slow down the process. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like naturally uh, people in administration are not going as fast as we would like to mm-hmm. in every well in right. every way possibly so uh, it was a very um, not that uh, it was very slow before but now it's really 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 slow right. so a lot of projects are not uh, not seeing the day because of the uh, wrong uh, estimating budgets and because everything is um, more expensive, the, the site, the ground, mm-hmm. it's very expensive right now. Post-COVID time, uh, everything went up, mm-hmm. even like apartments, uh, real estate, it's like difficult to do some investment in real estate like before. Yeah. So the banks, there's no loans right now, mm-hmm. nobody. And actually, there is no loans for the, the the normal people. So they stopped buying apartments. So the investors that are constructing apartments stop no constructing buy them, them because yeah. nobody's buying them. That's why. So the, the chain is like going from the small person to the, to the top, the biggest. Well, it's, it's so interesting. This is a kind of something that's been happening all around the the globe, you know, the supply yeah. chain issues exactly. that have been meaning that architects are working on a project and they're giving their estimations and then it goes out to, yeah. to bid and even the, in the space of the bidding, the kind of cost is moving yeah. and then the projects become completely unviable when the yeah. price comes back and the client's like, we can't yeah. do this and then they can't even afford to, to, they don't want to reinvest in the architecture fees to read to do a redesign yeah. to reduce the scope and then... The yeah. architect often gets blamed for it as well. Yeah, sure. And that's so, you know, they, they can be find themselves at the at the crux of that. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty difficult. Yeah. Difficult situations. Yeah. In in terms of you know you've been a, um, very vocal on social media about your advocacy for the importance of business in yeah. in architecture and just listening to you speak and describe your own kind of setup, it's leagues ahead of so many different different practices what what do you see some of the constraints architects are facing by not being educated in in business yeah that uh, that's very difficult i i i do as you say speak a lot about um business and architecture and starting a new business because i know that when you finish school you're not prepared you're not prepared at all i see people coming here working with us that are still at school or just finished 
that have no idea, absolutely no idea what's the real, uh, the reality about um, architecture, mm -hmm. about uh, money uh, in general, like uh, uh, what you need to be paid, what the project costs, uh, uh, what are the prices of the materials, nothing. So I just want to pass through some information, just give it away and help some people that are starting their own business or thinking about it. I have a lot of students that are writing to me and they say, oh, that's an inspiration. Thank you very much for sharing. Tell us some more. So I'm thinking about creating some something more specific about uh, passing through this information and how we do start a business here in France. I need to educate myself as well. I'm doing a lot of uh, classes uh, about finance, finance mm -hmm. to understand how um, to do it better. Mm -hmm. It's not just creating a firm and that's all, and then another one and and another one or doing everything together. So I try to to find a best way to do it and to to manage like a, a system of of different firms and that they're working all together. But social media for me it's a passion. I don't do it to to um, to get new clients. It's really about transmission and and giving away some. Uh, some of my passion, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so. in, in terms of, so the, the kind of financial education that needs to happen, what about marketing and, yeah. and kind of, and selling? What's your, how important is that to you in, build it, has, in building yeah. in your own practice and how important do you think it is as a skill that architects need to learn? Oh, I think it's very important. Like one of the most important thing, if there is ver uh, two most important thing, it would be marketing and finance for me to start a business and then architecture, mm -hmm. because architecture is the is the uh, it's the fruit of what you're doing. But how will you manage to do something if the kitchen is not ready? Yeah. <laughs> so, I. I I assume that I, I had I got lucky to 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 start a business that went through a lot of difficult times and and now I got the opportunity to learn how I was supposed to start mm -hmm. <laughs> because I didn't start it like I would today and we are still making some uh, errors and not doing everything correctly but uh, that's something that I regret that I didn't put enough in marketing throughout the years so I I need to correct uh, to correct that I'm sure that's very 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 important mm -hmm. as you um, show yourself the storytelling, the branding. Uh, how do you want to others to see you? Actually, till now I took it like I am the 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 one that people see. They trust me, and then the company comes next. But I think that the two must be in the same in the same position. Mm -hmm. Well, this is interesting. The kind of the idea of the personal brand and the business's yeah. brand and they're actually very important both like you say both of them hand to hand are actually quite yeah. important because the business brand can end up being a little bit faceless or cold and yeah. takes people people are inherently yeah. um cynical of when a business is trying to yeah. be like a person and then as a person that's great because it creates the human connection and you can tell a little bit about your yeah. life and people can follow you and so having them both together really opens uh, opens up in in terms of if you were to advise say a uh, an a, a architecture firm that was just starting what kinds of marketing ideas would you say were were really valuable or kind of get your best investment with or from i think uh, the the best thing is to surround yourself with the best consultants mm -hmm. Uh, when you don't know how to do it, the best way is to find somebody who knows how to do it and then work with. Yep. I think that's the best thing. But um, otherwise, just uh, educate yourself. There is a lot of things on the market today. If you cannot afford to, to have a consultant, then you can do it yourself some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better than nothing yep. <laughs> as well. And But just to... Uh, manage to know your um, value, to know what's 
what's most important to you, uh, to know several points that you stand out throughout your work and your behavior, mm -hmm. and then speak, speak about them. I think that that's the most important thing. And work on the, 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 fin the financial part as uh, how much it will cost me to work on a project, how much I need to sell it, what I need to buy to, to, to find another client as marketing consultants agency or uh, some publicity or I don't know, but there is, there is a lot of steps that need to be decided in the whole strategy before just going through the, <laughs> the nature yeah. with no rules. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So looking forward to the rest of 2023 and 2024, do you see the challenges getting easier here in France? Um, and what are, you, what are your kind of ways in business of navigating around the future and what are you looking forward to yeah. most? I think that, um, I hope that next year we is going to be better than this year mm -hmm. and I hope that uh, things will go a little bit more fast in constructing but actually throughout the crisis it helped us really think about what we want to do and we we kind of reoriented our work several times to, so we can find new projects new ideas um, new uh, interests about uh, for the firm for the future mm -hmm. so I think that What I've learned and what I'm looking for now is how to build a multidisciplinary team. As I said, we're starting, but it's only the beginning, so that we can propose like a service to our clients from uh, A to um, Z, mm -hmm. like for the, for, for the whole service from the beginning to the end of our project, and like. Um, be more open to business like architecture everybody thinks that architects are just uh, a person with uh, a, a drawing tool and that's all and it's not about it it's not just about that we can be part of the strategy and that's what I want to, to proclaim when I speak to new clients when I speak to my clients uh, at the moment I want to be part of the strategy so that I can be uh, the best advice that they could have in the strategy if uh, a site they think they can do residential and they think that I uh, can help them, maybe I will see something else, maybe throughout my experience and my analysis I can say, well, maybe we should try something more different, like uh, this kind of project or that, so it could work better. And I think that it's a pity that sometimes investors that don't have the whole picture Uh, decide something and then when it's not working they're just sweeping off and looking for something else I think that we can extract something from each place and it's it needs to be discussed <laughs> brilliant love it Vanetta that's a perfect place for us to conclude the conversation really really inspiring to to hear what you've created and some of the innovations that you've kind of had with your own service offerings and I think this will be a, a very inspiring uh, uh, podcast. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap. And one more thing. If you haven't already, please do head on over to iTunes or Spotify and leave us a review. We'd love to read your name out here on the show and we'd love to get your feedback and we'd love to hear what it is that you'd like to see more of and what you love about the show already. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment, and profit, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly, follow the link in the information. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.